Hello everybody, and today we are going to be going back to um, the Hyborian Age, talking about the Conan chronologies. So today we're going to be doing Rogues in the House, uh, chapters 1 and 2. This is a three chapter short story, but the third chapter is longer than the first two chapters combined. Um, but um, as far as what different people have thought the chronologies would be, um, that wind is ripping. Um, some people put Black Colossus after Tower of the Elephant, and um, I don't. And I'm going to put a map up of um, Hyboria so you could take a look. Um, Tower of the Elephant took place in Zamora. And this story, Rogues in the House, um, is uh, it's supposed to take place in a unnamed city-state. Um, but it says it's supposed to be between Zamora and Corinthia. Um, but it also says it's west of Zamora. So I don't know if that means it's on the border or if that means it's more in Corinthia than um, Zamora. I don't know. Um, nobody does. Um, but there are two fragment not not fragments these were just unpublished stories during Howard's lifetime um, uh, Hall of the Dead and um, God in the Bowl um, and I think Hall of the Dead takes place in Zamora still but God in the Bowl takes place in Namidia which is on the other side of Corinthia but then Black Colossus takes place in Tehran, which is completely on the other side of um, all of this. It's on the other side of Zamora, past the Waste, or that area. I think it's actually technically Shem. Um, but anyway, so... Um, there's a lot of jumping around a little bit here, um, but this is in the era we are still in of um, Conan the Thief, and um, as we go through this story, which you can read the first two chapters of at weirdmass.com. So go over there if you haven't read it yet. This is a real fun one. Um, and um, the reason why we're doing two chapters here is because this first chapter kind of goes along with what I was talking about the other day when I said some would argue that Conan is even the point of view character in Conan stories because um, this first chapter um, is from the point of view of Murillo who is a aristocrat who um, is selling state secrets to neighboring countries. Now, one thing about these stories that I find fascinating is that this story has a lot of political espionage and intrigue that we know about, but it's not important to the story, so we don't care about it. So it's not thrown into detail. Um, I could think of someone that has two initials of RR that might um, maybe take a hint from this style of sword and sorcery storytelling. Um, because at the end of the day, like, it really isn't important to what we're doing here. 
Um, the fact that it's there is important, but we don't need the nitty gritty of everything. We don't need to know everybody's cousins, aunts, brothers, roommate to be able to get through this story. So, um, Marilio is, um, at some festival and he gets a package and the package is from, um, I'm going to forget how to say his name now. Nabidius, he's the red priest of the king, um, and he actually kind of controls everything behind the scenes. Um, the king is kind of his puppet, and um, Nabidius is the name I'm going to say. It's probably wrong, but um, that's what I remember right now. So he gets this package, he opens it up, and he looks at it, and it's an ear, a severed ear. And the ear has a blemish on it, so he knows who it is. And it's the guy that he's been using to get secrets out of um, the king's court, let's say. So he doesn't know if this means Nabidius is saying... I know you, you're in on this, so here's your chance to get out of town. Or, if he's saying, you're effed, there's nowhere for you to go. So he's freaking out, and he's like deciding on if he's going to run, or if he wants to do something else, and he finally decides, maybe I should just kill Nabidius. If Nabidius hasn't told the king, of my treachery, um, and I kill Nabidius, then no one will ever know. So in the jail right now, um, these two dudes that were stealing a bunch of stuff um, have been caught, and um, they're in jail. One of them has been executed already. And the other one is a barbarian from Samaria named Conan. And how he got caught was he was super drunk at his old lady's house. Um, and after a night of debauchery, um, she turned him in. And so he woke up all drunk with all these swords in his face and he jumps up and guts one of the dudes and then as he's trying to escape he runs and goes face first into the stone door jam of the wall and knocks himself out this is our hero here folks um our silly silly hero so he wakes up in jail with chains on and um, things aren't looking good for our homie until Marilio shows up and goes in to the cell and is like, hey, do you want to get out of here? And Conan's like looking at him and he's like, I need you to kill somebody for me. If you do this, I'll get you out of here. And he's like, cool, like, who do I got to kill? And he's like, um, Nabidius, the red priest. And he's like, huh, okay. He doesn't care. He's just like, yeah, whatever, let's do this thing. And so Marilio tells him his plan. He's going to um, take his chains off. And um, later, about an hour from now, once he has gotten away um, and can have witnesses to where he is, um, Conan will get up and um, beat up the guard and tie him up, the guards in on it, and um, get the keys and just walk out. Um, so that's the plan. Nabidi, no, not Nabidius, Marilio, um, goes back to his house. And one of his servants comes in, and he's like, oh, dude, that guard that you had at the place, uh, he just got arrested. 
And so Morilio thinks that it's because of the planned spring Conan that something came out of it and now he got caught. So now Morilio's like, my life is shit, it's over, um, I just need to go kill Nabidius. This is not okay. So he goes to the Nabidius's fortress and there's supposed to be all these scary things there, like a giant um, guard dog, um, one of his servants that's supposed to be a total badass. Um, and when Morilio gets there, the dog's dead. Its throat's been ripped out. And the guy who everyone's afraid of, his head is turned all the way around, and he's dead. And so he's walking into the room, and he's got a sword. He's, like, ready to go. He sees the red cloak of the red priest, Nabidius. And as he gets right up to it, Nabidius jumps up and looks at him. And the look on Nabidius' face, the thing he sees is sheer terror. And that's the end of that chapter. So the second chapter is from Conan's point of view. He had uh, Murillo get him some good food because he'd been eating moldy bread for days. So he's eating like a giant cow leg, okay? And drinking wine, no chains. Conan didn't know that this other guard had already been arrested, and it turns out that he was arrested for other stuff that had nothing to do with this thing. And the guy that they put in his place is like a really staunch guard, like no one's going to F with this guy. And he's walking by and sees Conan, um, not in chains, and eating the end of this um, giant leg of beef. And he, he was so pissed. He just storms in the cell. And he's like, what are you doing? So Conan just takes his beef bone and brains him. As you do. So he brains him with a beef bone. And then just gets up and leaves. Um, and then he's like, you know what? Like, I don't think that's how that was supposed to go. And I pretty much just freed myself. So maybe I don't have to go do what this guy wants me to do. And then he's like, well, I wouldn't have had the good food. And my chain still would have been on if Murillo didn't come. So I guess I still owe him. And he's like, but before I killed Nabidius... I have some stuff to take care of myself. So he goes down to the maze where his old lady lives. She's probably just like some prostitute, and I'm making it a bigger deal than it is. Um, but the maze is like this like totally disgusting place where there's like no sewers or anything like that. And people just, like, throw their human waste out the windows onto the streets. And it's all muddy and gross. And so these, like, giant cesspools of um, feces and urine are all over the place. Um, it's just a really disgusting low-end area. And so he has the poignard or short sword that um, the guard had when he brained him. And he goes up, and he hears somebody coming out of the door that he wants to go into, and it's some dude. And the guy starts coming down the stairs, and Conan's like, eyes light up, and he just guts him. So Conan's body count in this is already pretty astronomical. Um, he's getting to Jason Voorhees' levels of killing dudes. And then he, like, goes in the um, chick's room, and she heard the scream. She sees the blood on his sword. She sees the look in his eyes. She's terrified. She's half naked. You know, she was probably doing what she does. And um, 
were like, oh, dude, Conan's going to kill this chick now. What? And Conan grabs her by the hair and pulls her to a window and picks her up and they climb out the window. And he's like going across the railing of the roof, holding on to her under his arm. And he sees this big puddle of shit and he just drops her into it. And she's like, blah, blah, blah. and he's like, ha, 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 ha. Um, because she turned him in, and now they're even. So now Conan is going to go to the house of Nabidius and do some damage. So that's where we're going to end this. Um, so this is. A lot of stuff going on, a lot of fun, and um, it's only going to get better from here. So, um, I hope you read it at Weird Mask and you enjoyed it, and um, next week we will finish this tale. So, I will talk to you guys later.